Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. As today, we kick things off with a long overdue level up. Seriously, it's been a while. 25 episodes since we hit level 14, but, uh, hey, we got there. That said, um, I am playing it pretty fast and loose with my level up choices here. Uh, a lot of my original plans have long since been derailed by bug fixes and balance patches, but let's go down the list. Y'all can let me know what you think about my choices down in the comments below. So, uh, first up, we've got Vex, who, as usual, is sinking yet another level into Hunter. That brings him up to 11, which nets him plus one to base attack, and not really a whole lot else. Skills are skills, we're pretty locked in there, so nothing new. But then we get to his new feat, and that is where things go a little off script. Now, uh, my original plan here was to really lean into crits, but in revisiting some of my earlier choices, I realized there's still a lot of benefit to going for Shatter Defenses instead. I had originally discarded the whole Intimidation and Shatter Defense thing after I realized how broken Mythic Persuasion was. But the first rank of Mythic Persuasion actually isn't that bad. Uh, that one just gives you a free Intimidate check against all of your enemies at the beginning of each new combat, as opposed to instantly paralyzing or even outright killing almost every enemy you encounter, like later ranks do. Uh, since we're going to have more rank 1 slots than I really know what to do with anyway, I figure we'll still pick that one up once we get into Act 4. So we might as well grab Dazzling Display now, so we can qualify for Shatter Defenses at level 17 and and really kind of leverage that whole thing. Uh, the alternatives here are that we were either going to go for Improved Improved Crit or Critical Focus. Uh, possibly Accomplished Sneak Attacker? But... After giving it some thought, I, I think we'll gain more from Shattered Defenses in the long run. Let me know what y'all think on that one. Aside from that, not much else to say with Vex. We get some new spell slots, but there's not really anything there we need, so I just grab Cure and Echolocation for emergencies. That's pretty much it for Vex. Which means we now jump over to his faithful and fickle feline steed. Kaz uh, hits level 15, which nets him plus one base attack and will... Always welcome. Plus improved evasion, which is even more welcome. Skills are skills, nothing notable there. And then we get to his feet, which is where we are preemptively following Vex's example by snagging Shatter Defenses. We already started setting him up for that back at level 13, so that's pretty much it for Kaz. Next we've got Regil, our diminutive Death Knight. He, of course, takes his ninth level in Beast Rider which nets him plus one base attack, plus one will, plus one reflex, as well as his second free teamwork feat. More on that in a moment. Uh, also worth noting, he can now use Greater Tactician as a free action, or sorry, a swift action, so uh, I might actually use it now. It was never really worth wasting an action on before, but he's usually got a swift action to spare. Skills are skills, mobility and persuasion are still our two mains, with perception slowly getting pumped up because why not? Uh, for our first feat, we're finally getting towards the end of our Intimidation track with Dreadful Carnage. Henceforth, whenever Regil lands a kill, he'll create a demoralizing burst effect. Not really sure where we're going after this. I, I guess we could start investing more into two-weapon fighting or possibly crit focus. Possibly a mounted combat feat or two? For our bonus teamwork feat, we're finally snagging Precise Strike. I usually take that one sooner, but Regil's build was kind of all over the place to accommodate Zorm. Not a huge deal at this point, but an extra d6 damage is an extra d6 damage, especially when he can now share that bonus with the rest of the party as a swift action. And that's pretty much it for Regil. Got some solid bumps in there with Dreadful Carnage and Precise Strike. Now let's jump over to Zorm. As per usual, Zorm is trailing one level behind the rest of the party, so he's technically only level 14. That means he nets a flat plus one to base attack, fortitude, and reflex, plus a slight bump to his skills, but nothing else. He'll have to wait until we hit level 16 before he can join Regil in picking up Dreadful Carnage. After that, we've got Waljif, our axe-hurling arcanist. Um, not much to say here. He snags his 14th level in Eldritch Scoundrel, which nets him plus one base attack and reflex, as well as an extra spell slot or two. 
Skills are skills, nothing new there. But then we get into his feats, and this is where things go a bit nuts. Because this is our completely normal level up. That is to say, three of our four casters are all picking up completely normal spell, a special meta magic feat that's only available to trickster parties. On its face, this is very basic stuff. You can tack it onto any spell in your spellbook to reduce its spell level by one. That can be used to offset other meta magic feats, as we'll be doing with Ember. Or you can just plug it into higher level spells and turn them into lower level spells, which is what we'll be doing with Waljif and Ruru. Uh, it's also important to note that if you do that with a level one spell, then that spell effectively turns into a cantrip. So with a character like Waljif, that suddenly grants us access to all sorts of wacky stuff, like infinite protection from alignment, infinite shield, infinite grease, infinite magic missiles, and uh, so on. So all told, a pretty fantastic upgrade. With a giant logistical headache that'll require me to completely redo our hotbars and spellbooks, but, you know, such is life. There's always a trade-off. And, uh, you know, this, this one should be well worth the trouble. Uh, as far as new spells go, again, not really a lot to say there. Waljif is still our primary arcane buffer, so we're really just grabbing a couple of basic arcane buffs. Life Bubble and Thought Sense. I'm honestly not sure we'll ever get much use out of those, but it's nice to have the option. And that is pretty much it for Waljif. Aside from the nightmare of redoing all his spell slots, but that's for future retcon to worry about. For now, we move on. Which brings us to Ember, our slightly singed spell slinger. And as if this completely normal level up wasn't already complicated enough, I thought this was as good a time as any to take care of a few other things I've been putting off. Uh, that said, we are finally going to take a single level of Cross-Blooded Sorcerer, so we can really crank up her firepower. Uh, that nets her a plus two will and like eight million other things. But, uh, you know, we will put a pin in that for a moment and we will circle back shortly. Skills are skills, absolutely the least of our concerns right now. Her feet, for those who weren't paying attention with Waljif, will be completely normal. Uh, given that she's a spontaneous caster, that means her completely normal spells will cost a full action to cast. So we'll basically just be using that in conjunction with Bolster to offset that plus one level modifier. I'll also be using it to give her a modest selection of completely normal full round cantrips to play with moving forward. Uh, but then after that, we start getting into the really crazy stuff. Starting with Brass Dragon Bloodline, which grants plus one damage per die on all of her fire spells. That is a huge net damage boost to all of her fire-based spells, which should more than offset the minor loss in firepower that we suffer for skipping a level of Witch. Her level in Sorcerer also nets her a free Sorcerer feat, so we're finally grabbing Spell Focus Evocation, which we've been putting off for a while now. That'll make it ever so slightly easier for her newly boosted fire spells to, you know, actually stick when she casts them. And after that, we get to her second bloodline. And we are going right for Fire Elemental, which converts the damage of all of her spells into fire. That means that now every single damage spell she can cast will inflict boosted unblockable fire damage. Like, for example, her completely normal ear-splitting scream cantrip, or her completely normal snowball. This, uh, this opens up a lot of new possibilities, so um, I, I look forward to having some fun with that moving forward. And that is pretty much it for Ember, which is good, because that is a lot. <laughs> Next up, we've got Darren, our divine dilettante. He grabs his 15th level in Oracle, which nets him a plus one base attack, fortitude, and reflex, plus a new Oracle Revelation. Skills are skills, mostly meaningless for him since he's only our lead in world knowledge. And for his feet, I'll admit there was some temptation to go for completely normal spell again, but I honestly felt like that might be overkill. We haven't really had too much trouble keeping him stocked up on healing spells. And as a spontaneous caster, metamagic is also kind of a pain for him. So um, I figured we'd just stick with my original plan instead. We can always take completely normal spell later. 
That is to say, uh, we will be keeping him focused on abjuration in general, and dispel magic in particular. Greater Dispel is going to be a very important part of our arsenal moving into Act 4, and Spell Specialization is one of the very few ways that you can actively boost it. So that is exactly what we're going to do. That'll net us a plus two on all of our Dispel Magic checks, though only with Greater Dispel. He also picks up that new Oracle ability, and uh, again, we're sticking with my original plans and finally snagging Nature's Whispers, a revelation I've had my eye on since we first picked up Second Mystery. That keys his armor class off of his charisma instead of his dexterity, which for now is just a net gain of plus one, but uh, once I've rearranged his equipment a little, that should give us a slightly heftier boost. And given that we're doubling down on Abjuration, our picks are pretty obvious. We'll be going for Break Enchantment at level 5, and Banishment at level 6, both of which should benefit from Spell Focus Abjuration. We also get a level 7 slot, but honestly nothing really jumped out at me. I mean, there's some decent spells here, but nothing I think that really fits Darren's build. So I just ended up going for Summon Monster 7 instead for those times we need more distractions on the field. But I'm open to suggestions. Aside from that, that's pretty much it for Darren which means it's Helpful's time to shine. Now, the goodest of girls hits level 15, which nets her plus one base attack, plus one will, and improved evasion, all welcome additions. Nothing notable on skills, and for her feat, we're keeping it simple by finally grabbing improved critical bite. Her last two slots will probably go towards dazzling display and shatter defenses, respectively. And that's pretty much it for Helpful. Which finally brings us to the Abyssal Archer, Arushale, who nabs her 15th level in Espionage Expert. That's a flat plus one to base attack and will, plus two slots worth of favored enemy. More on that in a moment. Skills are, in fact, skills, and her new feat should come as no surprise to anyone who's been paying attention. Uh, while she will gain less bang for her buck out of that one, it will make it a lot easier for her to buff up the pet pals between fights. She's the one we mainly rely on for things like Greater Magic Fang, Bark Skin, and so on. Uh, animal Growth. But as an added bonus, it also means that she can now essentially cast Aspect of the Falcon and Hurricane Bow as completely normal cantrips, so she can now effectively keep those running non-stop even without Greater Enduring. For her favored enemy slots, I figured we'd just even things out and pick up two ranks in Demons of Strength. That means she would now gain plus four to hit and damage against all types of demons, which they've split into three separate categories. Granted, there are arguments to be made for focusing on one type of demon over another, but in the end I thought it would be simpler to just be kind of good against all demons, as opposed to just really good against one or two specific types. Again, feel free to weigh in on that down in the comments if you feel strongly about it one way or the other. But for now, that's it for Arushale which means that's it for level 15. Aside, of course, from the labyrinthian logistics that I now need to take care of off-screen to get our spellbooks back in order, but, you know, that's the price I pay for my arcane shenaniganery. I'll go take care of that, and then the adventure will continue. We'll be right back. I say, I do believe your bleaching has progressed since yesterday. As your healer, I'm prescribing a trip to the nearest brothel. The experience will add at least ten years to your life. Naked people are of no interest to me. People faking desire for me, even less so. And we're back! It took the better part of an hour, but we are finally ready to go. And I think I covered almost everything here, though obviously there's still going to be some fine-tuning as needed. Since we have a lot going on, I'm sure I overlooked nice. something. That said, let's push on. We have another doorway over here we haven't checked out, so that's as good a place as any to start. Oh, uh, Greater Calabacus. Uh, full stop. Sorry, Calabacus Marauder.
which by itself isn't much of a threat, but it's more whatever else is in that room I'm worried about. That can't be it. There has to be something else. Likely in that summoning circle there. We're in the surprise round, so we'll just move up. Finish this guy off. Nothing on the initiative track. Um, oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Petrification Ray. Leading with their nastiest attack. That... That could have been bad. Let's push him back. Ember! Holy moly! I think she just one-shotted that thing. That was at full health, right? My goodness. That, uh... Okay, definitely not regretting that dip into cross-blooded. I'm sorry, did, uh, Waljif just backhand that demon? For 30 damage? <laughs> what is happening? It's like we just hit level 15 and all of our characters suddenly took off their their power limiters, their weighted cloaks and whatnot. Now they're just teleporting around the battlefields, we fighting the enemies to death. Yeah, yeah, that, that seems about right. Okay, see, that, that was slightly less impressive. Ruru, I'm going to need you to step up your game. Oh, uh, I see. Well, I was kind of right. There is something in the summoning circle. Just not what I was expecting. Oh, crap. That's what I forgot to do. I didn't slap down death wards. <laughs> Waldiff, you gonna hurl? Also, you're uh, you're moving way slower than you should be. Dread Carnage. Elevac is out. And that's it for the archers. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, I definitely forgot. Expeditious Retreat. One sec. Completely normal Expeditious Retreat. That's what all the uh, purple tabs on the spells are. Those are the spells I modified. Traps out. Let's get those level drains taken care of. The world's not ending just yet. Who, uh, who got tagged? It was helpful and someone else. Kaz, right, okay. 
So Kaz and helpful. Gotcha. Simple enough. Rules are made to be broken. There we go. Let's grab our loot. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that is a sizable chunk of change. Well worth the uh, the diamond dust, I think. Though again, we could have really avoided that by slapping down some death wards. That is one downside to our current build. Darren doesn't have extended like I normally would have given him. So very little in the way of mythic extended divine buffs. And speaking of death wards, I really should have slapped some down while I was talking about it. Good, good. No level drains. Let's take these guys out quick. No, this one. This one. One out. That's two. My goodness. Okay, no more hiding out of sight. I guess it's just the ghouls. Nice. Oh, nope, there we go. We do have another Bodak. He's just outside of engagement range. Interesting. Okay, we've got a breather. Let's slap down some death wards. should prioritize grabbing completely normal spell for Darren. I would go for enduring or abundant spells, but he just doesn't have the slots for it. We actually still need Mythic Beast for helpful. Bodax. Oh. Rebound. Plus three cold iron gnome hooked hammer. Uh, on hit, target must pass a fortitude save DC 23 or become stunned. If an enemy is stunned, they suffer an additional 2d8 piercing damage. I mean, honestly, the 2d8 damage is nothing, but the stun, that is pretty fantastic. Seems like a pretty straightforward upgrade. Plus three over plus two. Chance for stun, extra 2d8 damage over 1d6. Oh, right, and uh, we have Mythic Arcana, so it's actually plus four. That is absolutely worth equipping. Very nice. Between that and that ring we found for Waljeff, we are finding some fantastic gear here. Now, if only we could find a proper Kukri for Vex. Bodak Corpsman. Nabasu and Rolikai. Much less threatening with Death Ward running, but that's only on our front line. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. I will see to your demise. 
to be fair, they are weak against holy things, and that is a mighty big hole. Oh, okay. That's not great. We've got some bee lining for our back line. All right, well, Jeff. Distract them for me. Hey, not bad. Bodaxed. Kneel before me. This is my Front line clear. Let's get to the back. I'm sure you guys have that. Oh. What a ghoulish surprise. Ghouls aren't too bad. Though I think these are the ones with sneak attacks, so let's not pull any punches. Incoming. <laughs> nice. Anyone else going to try that? I do have combat reflexes. They seem fixated on wall, Jeff. concludes your arc. Almost. Not bad. And now the last one. Time to share your treasures. Die already. Wow. <laughs> I mean, what else can I even say? That our guys seem to be doing great today. Basu out, Brolakai shaken. Brolakai's out. And we are clear. Fantastic. Let's see what we've got here. So we are seeing obvious signs that they are mining this stuff. That would certainly seem to imply it's the source of the purple crystals. Which we have seen in three places at this point. Arilu's lab, Xanthar Vang's lab. And possibly Blackwater as well. Though those were implied to have come from space. I mean, originally from space, then then from wreckage mined in Numeria. Also, uh, infinite cure lights. Not the most efficient way to heal, but it is nice to save the actual heal spells for emergencies. Let's double check the loop real quick. I guess the implication here is that those death demons, the Brolikai, were using animated corpses to mine, which would make sense. Demons certainly aren't going to do their own mining. Okay, well, this is unsettling. 
This feels like a clear warning that we're coming up on something nasty. Something that's dangerous even to demons. Oh yeah, that is extremely blatant. A literal pile of corpses. Also, the music just changed. Let us make haste. Oh, hi. Um, shoot. That's a Death Snatcher. Well, that was kind of underwhelming. Was that it? No, there has to be more. Let's do a little blast fishing here. And there we go, we've got shadows. Oh shoot, hold on. <laughs> got a... Yeah, I've got a mouse. I've got a uh, cat here in my mouse. Rain's been coming up here a lot lately with the... Uh, the house getting shuffled around so much lately. And she's a cutie, I don't mind the company, but... She sheds like crazy. Alright, so shadows. No big deal. We've taken these guys out before. They are surrounding us, though. That is slightly problematic. Kneel before me. One out. Oh! Well, well, Darren's dead. Um... I may have been focused on the wrong thing here. Oh! I see. 64 armor class, you say? That is certainly a thing that is currently happening. Also, our healer was Alpha Strike to death, so I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say we're not going to do well in this fight. Shadow 2, out. Helpful on this thing. Cover me, all right? Shadow 3, out. Had to clear the casters. Okay. He's not immune to being hit. We landed a couple of good ones there, but... Let's see how he is on touch, AC. There we go. Okay. And Helpful's dead. Regil, also dead. <laughs> Well, might be about time for me to hit that old dusty trail. See, we can land hits on this guy. We're doing decent damage. We've got him over halfway down. He just obliterates anyone he sets his sights on. Uh, Zorm, dead. Vex, dead. Let me get a closer look at this guy. A 
Okay, see, there's our problem. He's got all the buffs. He just has all of them. If Darren hadn't died on round one, we could have... We could have started wiping these off of him. Let's hit the pause button real quick. I am going to reload and I am going to lay down some groundwork. All right, let's try this again, shall we? With some slightly tweaked tactics. Trust in yourself. This is actually uh, try number three, by the way. I had to make some slight adjustments. Okay, first things first, let's clear the closer shadows. Cover me, all right? No, no, you guys stay there. No, that's fine too. Uh, okay. We just need the meat puppets to stay up front. They're on decoy duty to keep the darkness distracted until Darren can do his thing. Stay here. We don't want to overextend. We need the darkness to lock onto the summons. Oh, come on, really? Right through the wall, huh? That is bullpucky. I call shenanigans. Fall back. Stab you or zap you. Why not both? Okay. Okay. All right, Darren, really counting on you here, buddy. Attack the darkness. Hey, okay, we got Owl's Wisdom, Mind Blank, Displacement, and Greater Invisibility. Nice, that's not a bad start. I think that's all his concealment. He might still have Blur. He basically had all the Alchemist buffs. Could really use some summons over here. Thank you. That's fine, just... Keep the shadows off us. Still at 62 AC, but he is down to 20% concealment. So it is just blur. All right, Ember, bring the heat. My goodness, guys, please. We did better last time. Hey, okay, first hit. Nicely done, Waljif. Damage is trivial, but nice to see some actual hits.
For goodness sake. Okay, Dispelling Bee. Nice. Bark skin, haste, shield, and blur, all gone. I will resist. We're down to 52 AC, no concealment. Okay, okay, now we're talking. Now we are doing some damage. Come on, buddy. You know what? I'll take it. We're gonna have to death by a thousand cuts this guy. Hey, and finally... A noticeable dent in his health. Kneel before me. Nice, nice, nice. All right, man, I think we've got this. We just need people to not die. Let me dispel this out for you. Stone skin, echolocation, sea invisibility, and heroism. Nice. Prepare yourself. Still sitting at 54 AC, though. Below half. Bex. We've got him at one quarter. And I would much prefer no quarter. And on the ropes, but he's up next. Upples down, but not dead. Oh wow, Waljiff. Waljiff, buddy! That was excellent. Okay, please, someone, someone land a hit. We are so close. And we are good. We have fought back the darkness. Oh boy, <laughs> that was stressful. I mean, I don't know why. We obviously could have just reloaded, but still. Still. Okay, so you're staying dead? Certainly seems that way. I'm seeing mostly conventional gear here, but let's have a peek. That's just insulting. Ring of Evasion. Handy, but not, not great. Wow, really? I mean, the bracers are okay, but I was really expecting something a bit more... Spectacular, worthy of the the epic battle we had to overcome to get this far. Seriously? Plus four corrosive short spear turned plus five in our hands. I mean, that's not awful, I guess.
Plus three mithril speed scimitar. Hmm. And a manual of quickness of action plus two. Yes, okay, now it makes sense. After a fight like that, there had to be something good in here. Something... Oh, and we've got this. Helmet of Weakening Torture. Whenever the wearer of this helmet lands a hit with a melee weapon, the target must pass a Fortitude Savings Throw, 25, or suffer bleed damage that equals the wearer's strength modifier for 1d4 rounds. This bleed doesn't stack with itself, but stacks with bleed effects from other sources. Interesting. Keyed off strength, though, so that's not really much good for Vex or Regil. Zorm's got the DR-10 helmet on. But that helmet might be worth switching off to because he also does bleeding damage with his melee attacks. So double bleed damage would be pretty appealing. And dead end. Oh, we're we're just past Grisilla's camp. Yeah, that's the um okay, that's the dead end we saw earlier. That's the crystal bridge we crossed. And I questioned why they would have a bridge leading to nowhere. I guess this was why. I'm not really sure what purpose that would serve. I guess to get behind that tough fight we had on the bridge. That would let us come up on the Colossus from behind. Or maybe a better approach for Grisilla, if we had fought her. Alright folks, well that was exhilarating. Sadly, we are pushing time, so I guess, I guess that's it for today. I was really hoping we'd wrap up the Fane, but um, I wasn't expecting to run into that. However, I am glad we were able to overcome it. That makes for a much more satisfying ending than if I had just smashed up against it, train wrecked to death, and then given up and, and gone to the end of the Fane instead. That said, uh, we will we'll camp out back at the statues, which are off to our left. What was over here? Oh, right, that's the doorway to nowhere. Gotcha. Okay, so we will uh, camp out here in the center room. We'll hang out with the queen for a bit. Whilst I double-check all our buffs, make sure we're ready to proceed. And we will pick up here next time. Oh, you know, um, someone mentioned there's also something going on with these switches, so... I will look into that as well. There might be something else we have to do before we actually close things out here. But yes, that said, uh, we'll hit the pause button here. I'll take care of all that stuff I said. And we will pick up here next time. See you then! Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including, but not limited to, Revenant, Eloise, Dragon Matrix 7, Dracut, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremay, Kazorm, Mark Diemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Rowan Church, Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description. The experience will add at least 10 years to your life.